Hey everybody, things are really starting to warm up here in East Central Mississippi and a lot of our late winter or early spring crops are starting to phase out and now we need to get into our summer crops. So for example, you can see right up here some of the sets that we purchased or the bare root plants actually are, are now going to flower. Uh, some of these with the fluctuations of the temperature early in spring instead of being biennial are putting out flowers this year so we're just going to let them go we're going to let these onions that are flowering flower we're going to let them do their thing the potatoes you can start to see are dying back uh, these were all nice and lush and green and are now starting to die off there's nothing wrong with them we've already eaten off of these uh, last night for supper as a matter of fact we're going to take up one of these plants and we'll also take up one of these onions just to see the kind of production that we are actually getting out of these it's not massive uh, but we're certainly happy with it it's the best potato crop we've ever had on the property back behind us here you can see the last three rows were all peas the fenced row in the back was sugar snap peas and the two rows in front of that were bushing varieties of shelling peas, English peas. And we got a ton. <laughs> I don't even know how many. We blanched and froze just sacks and sacks of uh, zip top baggies for peas. So we have got uh, both sugar snap and shelled peas that will last us the rest of the year. So those are going to get, we're going to take up the drip tape and till those areas and now put in beans, uh, runner beans, to grow throughout the year. Got a variety of different kinds of uh, dry beans that we want to grow. We've also have a couple rows here that we've already started that have some tomatoes and some cucumbers. We also have some different squashes uh, on the far end down there and just starting to flower are my favorite, the yellow pear tomatoes. And on this one behind me here, the fence that has the white posts, those are going to be the uh, big beefsteak tomatoes and they are just starting to flower out as well. I did take a sucker off of one of these plants and try to start a third plant because one of my plants died off and uh, that's brand new planting it's still trying to recover from being transplanted hopefully that section of the vine will recover and start putting on roots it's in a pretty fertile hole so hopefully we'll uh, get what i'm really looking to see there the fence that's in the center are the cucumbers on the right hand side are slicing cucumbers and on the left hand side are pickling cucumbers and it looks like we've already got a couple uh, little picklers that are ready to get picked this weekend so we'll be doing that later and then you can't see it very well but behind the pickles is where the squash are growing we've got zucchini as well as crookneck squash and they are really looking like they're going to put out just tons and tons of squash i was going to use some of this empty space in the rows to plant more squash but i'm just not sure my family's going to eat it we're not really big squash eaters so i need to think about what I'm going to fill up the rest of these rows with or if I'm just going to let them start laying fallow already. I don't think I want to do that but I don't know what else I'm going to plant. So let's take a look at the potatoes and the onion and see what kind of things we're getting out of this messy weedy garden. So we have two varieties of potatoes growing. We have the Norland Red and the Yukon Gold and yesterday we had the Norland Reds. So it only suffices to try to see how the yellows are growing today. So we're just going to take up this uh, one, maybe two plants. We'll see. I know a lot of you have broad forks uh, for doing this, potato forks. I don't have one. And I am not going to buy one just for this season. So all I'm doing is I know where my drip tape is. I'm coming back behind my drip tape, which should be about a good 12 inches away from the base of the plant. I don't expect potatoes way out here. So I'm just coming down and breaking up the soil. You can see the whole plant's moving. And now I'm gonna come in here and just pull them up. I'll say this, 
We were getting a lot better out of the red potatoes. Let's try the next one over. You know what I didn't think to look up beforehand is whether or not these Yukon Golds are mid-season or what. I'm going strictly on how the plant looks. They may need another week or two for the tuber to develop really well. I might be coming in on them a little early. Those Norland Reds seem to be fairly well known for just how early of a variety they can be. But I don't know. Let's see here. It's these little suckers like this that end up making it where you always have potatoes just keep coming up and coming up. That's all it takes. It's just like a, a lettuce seed. You know, it's just a small little thing, but it can make a whole plant. And one of those getting missed, and you can easily have potatoes here again next year. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably the tuber we planted. I wasn't seeing that with the Norlands. That's kind of interesting. So, wow. Let me see if I can do any better over there with the Norlands and uh, show you what we were seeing yesterday. All right, so here's the row with the Norland Reds. You can see one we took up yesterday. We, uh, we know these aren't gonna live very well, but they had some tiny tubers at the bottom. And we're kind of curious if we put them back underground, will they grow anymore? We don't know, but we didn't have anything else to do with it. This is cat mint. Well, I tell you what, you grow it one time, you'll never grow it again. Won't have to. Just keep coming back on its own. All right, let's see if this is going to make us any happier. You can get any more love out of this plant than we were getting out of them Yukon Golds. I think they just want to embarrass me on video. Because we sure had a whole lot more than this yesterday. Which is why I said, hey, I'm going to go shoot a video about those potatoes today. Those came out really good. And now today, not so much. So that's actually off two little plant. Well, one plant and that. It's just those four. But hey, that's better than nothing. Let's go look at the onions. So the thing you always end up worrying about, unless you're just flat out good with it, is whether or not your onions actually bulbed up. These ones are breaking the soil here, so you can see that they certainly have bulbed up. Maybe not as big as they could have been. Whew, didn't want to give it up. Some deep roots there. Red onion, we'll take up two of these and we'll go check out the, uh, the sweet white onions. Oh, that's a little one. So, these onions are all starting to die off. Um, so we'll probably go through here and pull up the ones that, well, I don't know, we'll probably just pull them all up. Well, you know what I think I'll actually do? I think I'll wait. I'm gonna pull up a couple of these and use them for meals. But I think the rest of them, I'm gonna wait and see what you all say. I mean, you can see the leaves are starting to yellow but they're still pretty erect and really started falling over. Maybe I'm not giving it enough time to let the bulb develop. Maybe I need to be giving it a little bit more time. You tell me, this is the first time I've ever actually had onions worth harvesting whatsoever. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know whether or not I should, I guess maybe that's part of why I'm eager to get them out of the ground before I lose them to something or another. Uh, but there's two little examples there. So, you tell me, what do we do with the onions? While you're telling me what to do about the onions, tell me about the ones that have flowered. I mean, I'm a big believer in supporting the native insects, and part of me wants to leave the flowers alone. But I don't know if, like so many other plants, once you get a flower spike, if that somehow ruins the bulb. Has it 
used up all the energy and if I pull that up the bulb's not going to be any good I, I don't know let me know if those are still harvestable this season or what the best thing to do with those is you can see the squash a little bit better from over here um, you see what the row actually looks like and I think now I'm going to go in there and pull up the pickling cucumbers you know I've I've tried to wait in the past and try to make sure I had a a full jar worth of pickles and just do them jar at a time uh, as they as they were ready to harvest and it seems like inevitably I wait too long and I end up getting a, a pickling cucumber that's more or less a slicing cucumber at that point or it starts to turn yellow and start setting its seed and and it goes on so I'm, I'm gonna have to just go in there and harvest the couple that are ready now and we'll go from there I don't know but I don't want to lose them I don't want to lose them this year so that's what's going on with the uh, annual guard next time we come back I will probably have uh, pulled up this fencing and tilled the back rows and put the fencing back up and got that ready for planting beans so once the beans start growing uh, I'll come back and show you a little bit more another time let me know about these onions now and what you think about the potatoes. Should I let the potato plants die back a little bit more before trying to harvest any more? You think that that would give me uh, better results in the future? I'm terrified that the more I leave these root crops in the ground, the more all of my ground dwelling bug friends are going to find them and eat them before I do. So. I'm nervous about it. I've completely lost potato crops in the past because of that, and I don't want to lose it all again this year. So let me know what you think down below. Thank you all so much for watching. If it's your first time being on the channel, we'd love to have you to stick around and be a part of our little homestead. So make sure you hit that subscribe button up in the corner. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.